Hello fellow sim flyers and drivers, I'm Greg Lagnice, creator of the Simulator Sled, and this video is the first in a series to help you in building your own sled. Make sure you've grabbed the blueprints from the URL shown before starting, and also make sure that you have the tools required for this project, namely a circular saw, clamps, and a sawhorse, along with a drill and a screw gun. Okay, so this is the finished part that we're going to be building and describing how to build today. Before you start, make sure you have an area big enough to handle full sheets of boards and MDF. Uh, you're going to need an area that you can essentially uh, throw a lot of sawdust because MDF is going to make a hell of a mess. Okay, the second thing you want to get is a finished grade 2x4. Now you're going to use this as a guide to mark the lines on the board for where you want to cut. And you're also going to use it as a guide for your circular saw so that you're making straight and accurate cuts. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is use that board to lay out the markings and the lines for every piece that you're going to cut out. Using the blueprint, it maps out exactly where everything has to be on the board. So first start with your finished grade 2x4 and mark out all the individual pieces. Now after you've cut all the individual pieces, make sure that you mark on them the uh, number or the letter or which sheet they came from so you know which part is which and, and then organize them all. You also might want to use a tack cloth to clean them all off at this point. Okay now that we've got all our parts we're going to start on construction of the sled bottom. Now the sled bottom basically is your your big slab of course and what we want to do is we want to attach the individual blocks to it by simply gluing them to this board. Now we can't screw into the side of MDF so what we're going to do is we're going to lay out where these things go. Again look at the blueprints for the location. You're going to squirt down some wood glue and just glue them flat on and give them you know a couple hours at least to dry. And then what we're going to do is flip this board over and screw our wheels into the bottom of those. It doesn't have to be exactly accurate just try to get them close to the middle and then screw them down. A quick note about screw sizes, just make sure you use a screw that's about a quarter inch shorter than the combined thickness of whatever you're screwing into. Okay, now we're going to work on building the side pods. Now basically these pods are identical right and left and we need to build two pods to attach to the base. Now both of these assemblies are done using a pine wood reinforcement. So you need to cut these individual pieces of pine if you haven't already and then we're going to glue those to the boards. Now when you attach these pine boards to the outer board, you don't need to screw them, but it would help just, just to add to the rigidity. Also the bulkheads in my prototype, I only had one, the design calls for three, it's up to you. The three would make it easier to do this next step. And when you plant these things on the baseboard, just remember you don't have the front and back board there. So you need to take that into account when you align them on the baseboard. You'll also need to make sure you flip this unit over to screw them in, so make sure you mark the baseboard from the bottom. So now once you have it in, in, screwed in, you can start working on those top deck plates. Now, in my case, I actually waited towards the end to do this, but you don't have to. Now, if you screw in these top plates, then you'll go ahead and make sure that they are, it adds to basically the rigidity of the system while you're working. You're gonna wanna set the pod doors in, which are effectively your compartment doors, only from a spacing point of view so that when you set the back ones in, you can line them up more uh, perfectly. And, but make sure you leave space there because once this thing's painted, the doors don't open and close well. Okay, now once you have the fundamental base pods attached, we need to put the actual end caps on which straps everything together. So start in the back and basically screw these on. Now in my case, um, I finished them, but um, you may just want to leave those with screws so you can pop them more easily off. If you're going to add the amp to it, you need to take one of these guys off and cut a hole in it to hold whatever electronics or amp components you want to put in. This back plate needs to be a one-piece unit because that's essentially what's strapping the two sides together. You also should pre-drill any holes here if you want to put any surround sound hookups in at this stage and of course complete your wiring at this point. Okay, so now we're going to work on the pedal box. Now the pedal box is raised six inches so that we could fit transducers or speakers inside of it. If you make it shorter, just make sure where, if you're going to use anything that it will fit in there. Now you basically have to take backer blocks and glue them in place where they're going to essentially form the box area. Then put the front and the back up to fit against that and screw that in. Your top plate will not be glued on but rather just screwed on so that you can get back inside there if you ever need to in the future. You also will probably want to put um, some glued on backer boards on the inside of the pods so that your uh, strips that you're going to use to support the top of the pedal box, you have something to screw into. If you just screw straight into the side, you know, you'll have about a half inch um, MDF there and that's not very strong. 
Okay, these parts obviously are part of the MDF cut, but they're used to slide the monitor rack forward and back. Now in the original design, that was a welded rack. In the new uh, Mark II design, there's an improved uh, steering rack that has much less flex in it, but it's also based on T-slots, so you don't have to weld it. I'll cover that in a separate video. Okay, now we're on to the pedal box itself. So this is basically um, pine wood and MDF that you're gonna screw together here. And you're going to want to make sure you get some T-nuts from McMaster Car to press into the outside of those pine boards. And uh, a bottom line is you're going to have to press those in. The easiest way to do that is to use um, two boards on either side of those T-nuts and a clamp or a vise if you have it and squeeze them gently into the wood. If you try to hammer them in, you're probably going to snap the pine wood. Now once you have those all in place, you also need that piano hinge, which you can just get at your local hardwood store and just cut it wherever, you know, to whatever width you're making it. If you're following the blueprints, just cut it to the size shown. And that's pretty much it. Just use small screws that come with it to screw the two pieces together. Okay, so now that you've got all the pieces and parts built, it's time to start the finishing aspect. Now to start with, you're gonna need to get wood filler and go over all the holes and uh, essentially miss joints, places where things don't perfectly line up, and fill them and then sand them uh, until you've got them, the finish on the outside of the unit, relatively smooth um, for all the different surfaces. Then you'll want to prime it and look for defects and wherever you still see creases, lines, holes, etc. You want to go back with your uh, filler and redo those areas and reprime them until you don't have any more defects visible. For the pedal box, you don't really have to be too careful with this since you'll never see the edges anyway. Now at this stage, you can start your paint. Um, we use an oil-based paint mainly because it rolls on smoother, um, which means you'll have less of an orange peel effect, which is that ripply kind of a finish, and also it's a tough finish. Now what you're going to want to do is roll on at least one or two coats and then go back over that with say a 600 grit or a 700 grit sandpaper in between those painting layers. That will help you get a nice tough and smooth finish. But bear in mind that's going to add a little bit of thickness which is why we made sure that those doors were shaved down a little bit earlier. Once you're happy with your paint layer, then you'll want to go over it with an automotive clear coat which is typically a sprayed on. Again, you'd use a wet sand thousand grit sandpaper in between those um, clear coats and maybe even a buffer if you really want to get a polished finish. Okay now once you're done with the finish you're going to want to let it cure for at least two days if not more and then tape it off so that you can start with your carpet. Now the carpet is a trunk carpet uh, that you can get from most uh, stereo supply shops and you're going to need to dry fit it first then spray the back and spray the unit with something like heavy duty 3M glue and then essentially just tack it in place. Now once you've done that, as soon as it's in, peel that tape off. You don't want that tape sitting on there too long. Okay, so assuming you've done everything we've described, this should be something like what you're looking at now. You should have your base done and should be ready to start on your monitor rack and steering rack at this point. Okay, so the next video in this series will detail how to make the two different monitor racks. Obviously the one is welded together and the new one is based on a T-slot which doesn't require welding. So I will probably focus on how to do that. Um, there's also some discussion about making kits for that particular monitor rack. So thank you for watching and uh, hopefully I'll have the next video out to you soon. Take care.